Hmm. In recording a couple of chapters of scripture, um, I began to record Ephesians chapter 6, and I was reminded of something, and it's a confession, a confession of myself from myself. Now then, I will read Ephesians chapter 6, looks like 1 through 4, and then later I will get the whole chapter recorded and added to the playlist. <laughs> At any rate, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And, fathers, Provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now then, going round about, going on, about 32 years ago, um, I wasn't married. No, I was not. Children are a gift from God. About 32 years ago, I was given the gift of a beautiful little, um, I believe it was five pound, some odd ounce, baby boy in the month of June. <laughs> I was there in the hospital when he was born, brought into this world, I was not allowed in the delivery room because it was a cesarean section. I do remember afterward, though, going up to the window and seeing this beautiful little baby lying in a clear tub in front of the window with this gorgeous shock of red hair upon his little head. And I was just amazed. I was astounded. Um, I went home with them. And it wasn't too long afterward because of me. Because of me being the fallible fool that I was. And the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Now with my mouth, with these two lips, and this tongue, I would never have said that there was no God. But if you had looked at my life, if you had watched my life, in my heart, in my heart, I was saying there was no God through my actions. I was saying there was no God. But I left, and I abandoned that lovely little woman and that beautiful, beautiful red-haired boy. Um, around two and a half years later, I was given the opportunity to reunite with his mom. And we were married on December 10th. Um, ten years of marriage we had, and then like a, an idiot, I left after almost ten years of marriage. Um, in the meantime, she rightfully divorced me, as she should have. Now, throughout those years, I got to spend those years with that beautiful, beautiful little red-haired boy. Um, and in reading this, I was reminded, um, my boy, the son that the Lord had given me, 
He was very quick. He was very smart. And I was very determined that he was not going to be one of those oh, here that kid comes again, I can't stand him, type of children. And I did expect more from him um, because he was capable of delivering it. Now then, I used a heavy hand on him. I didn't beat him, but he got more spankings than he needed. He was the type of child, looking back, that, and especially as he grew, I could have spoken to and reasoned with, and this could have been the rod, more so than the belt or my hand. Um, but I am guilty of, very, very, very guilty of this and I will read once again Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 and ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord now then I was lost I was very, very, a very much a lost man, though I was endowed with a certain amount of religiosity. Um, as I'd said, um, oh, I believed in God. Yeah, I believed in God. So for that, we are going to go to... <laughs> I believed in God, and I wouldn't have said that there was no God. No, I wouldn't have. So for this, we will reference James chapter 2, verse 19, which reads, Thou believest that there is one God? And I did. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Now in that, I would not have said with my mouth that there is no God, but did by the life that I lived. Um, and I believed that there was one God. But guess what? I never trembled. Even the devils tremble. I didn't. I was a very, very, very false convert at best. So, I could talk some God and some religiosity, and I can only think the detriment, the damage that I did, um, the false picture of God that anyone especially my son and my wife, had gotten from me, from me, I know what their other option was, and it was false also, but for the responsibility of what I had done. If the Lord wanted to send me to hell, that definitely would have been one, and especially considering that even a bad thought is enough according to our God, who is holy, um, to send one straight square to hell, as has been said, a saying used. But, once again, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. I did that. I did that. But bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. I did not do that. And I was an unsaved, lost man. Um, that's no excuse, but that is to explain, although there may have been a picture of quote unquote religiosity, I wasn't saved, I wasn't converted. And the damage that I would have done in that, as well as being just a bad father, a 
bad father. Um, I will have to add to that uh, my son was in his early teens when I left for a trial separation which ended in divorce. Um, I abandoned him once again. What an idiot I was. Throughout this lifetime the Lord has given me one child, one offspring. And that was my son with that beautiful shock of red hair. Before that, he was conceived and came into this world. And before that, I would literally have dreams of holding a child. And that child was mine and came from me. And um, it was a little boy didn't have the shock of red hair but was a beautiful little boy and I would dream and I would feel such love for that child that it was inexplicable to me in those dreams the Lord God gave that to me but being a lost idiot um, I threw it all away I threw it away. And what am I left with now? <laughs> Me. Um, but now, I do have the Lord Jesus Christ. I am His. He is mine. So I am grateful for that. But, you know... Perhaps if I had been saved, had I been converted, I would have read Ephesians chapter 6, and I would have lived by this book, this book, and I would have seen, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That does not mean no discipline. That does not mean that silky, sappy, worldly kind of love where you just let someone do anything that they want and excuse it all. That's not love. Read the scriptures. That is not love. Um, Matthew chapter 23 or 24 as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to look just to make sure. Um, I'm believing that chapter 24 is concerning um, the Jews and the time of Jacob's trouble. I'm believing that. Okay. Matthew chapter 23. The Lord Jesus Christ is God, God in the flesh, and he was walking this earth at the time. God in the flesh. God is love, right? Read Matthew chapter 23 and experience some of God's love. And this will cr clearly show that we don't excuse everything and just hug somebody and kiss them and give them a lollipop and pat them on the head. That is not love. So, it doesn't mean no discipline, but of the many things that I did wrong, that I had done wrong, ignorance and a bit of stupidity. Um, one chance I was given, and I blew it to smithereens. Well... So to those out there who may be in the blessed position of being a parent of a child given the responsibility of raising that child in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, um, take this verse to heart. Take this verse to heart. And don't make the same choices that I did that I did. You will carry regret with you.
for a long, long, long time if you do not completely destroy whatever could have been, whatever you could have had of what the Lord hath given you. And once again, <laughs> reading through the scriptures, another thing come to my mind. I thought I would just make a video on it. Um, blessings to those who are of the church of the living God. May the Lord bless you in every way according to every need that you have. Um, and if you happen to watch this and you do not belong to the church of the living God, may it be, may your blessing be that the Lord will bring you to the point of destruction, that you will fall on your face flat out before Him, truly repentant, broken, and stripped of your self-righteousness. Cry out to Him to save you. And He will make that decision. Not you. Not you quoting a little pious poem after a pastor in a sanctuary of a church building or anywhere else. Bow your head and repeat after me and mean it with all your heart. Boom! You're saved. Doesn't work that way. God makes a decision. God judges the heart. It's not your choice not by flesh. May this bless somebody, someone. May the Lord use it as he will. Thank you.